Hello, we're back and playing some more Pauper. This week playing the deck that I first started playing when I started playing uh, the format, really. And that is Slippery Boggles. Why did I start playing this when I started? Because it is very brain dead, but can have decisions to be made. That's the best way to think of it. This deck is named after this little guy right here. 1-1 one, one Hexproof Creature. We have another 1-1 one, one Hexproof Creature, and then another 1-1 one, one Hexproof Creature. This one costs two, though. Now, the way this deck works is, we get these on the field. Oh no, my creature, they're hard to be targeted by opponents. And then we have, well, the rest of the deck. One second while I stack it up to make this nice and easy to look through. Oh yeah, worth mentioning. We only run 17 lands because we run 8 cards to enchant lands, and we only have a CMC top end of 3. Now, we have... Why is this even in the deck? I know it's... Oh, it's a permanent card, that's why. Okay. Ethereal Armors, Cartouches, Rancors, and Lightlink. Here we go. This deck runs 19 enchant creatures. <laughs> that is the purpose of the deck. With our big payoffs being Ancestral Match, which gives us plus two plus two each for each other enchantment on the battlefield, and Ethereal Armor, which gives us plus one plus one for each enchantment you control and has first strike. This one cares itself. This one doesn't. This one cares about only yours. This one cares about all. Important. And then we have five cards with lifelink, eight cards with uh, trample, because we have Rancor, because Rancor is really nice in that it keeps coming back and gives us the plus two plus O. Oh. Very hard to answer permanently. Uh, Cartouche of Solidarity to give us some insurance against edict effects. I couldn't think of the word edict. Gives plus one plus one first strike, and we get a little deuter with it. That's all those. Then we have Malevolent Rumbling to make the deck a little bit more consistent, because that has always been an issue with uh, Boggle style decks. And ram through, because sometimes you just need a removal spell. There's really no other way to describe it. In the sideboard, we have... Honestly, it will feel weird. We have more lifelink, more removal. Permanent, so we, uh, we control become hexproof and indestructible, and we gain two life. The indestructible is the important part, because most of our... Actually, all of our stuff is already hexproof. Flaring pain to prevent damage prevention, because there is a turbo fog deck that occasionally runs around. And there's also prismatic strands. Protection from red, because the biggest board wipe in the game is a red deck, or is a red spell. And if we're playing against it, we can just bring this in, and then we have a flying pro red creature. That a lot of times they just can't block, and we can just clog up bat combat as well. Thribbon Charm, because it has a lot of utility. We can use it as removal, we can use it to destroy an enchantment, and we can exile cards in graveyards. Very multifaceted. Standard Bear is a weird card. It exists for a couple decks, the biggest ones being Elves and... I'll think of it in a moment. Oh yeah, the mirror match. In those two specific decks, this will just win us the game more often than not. It's very strong, and really, I don't have anything else to say about it. Like, it's just very good at what it does. It makes it so that when that's on the field, you can only target it or other uh, flag bearers. And since that's the only flag bearer ran in Pauper, you have to target it. That out of the way, let's just get into the gameplay. All right, game one, we are on the play. Uh, no, I did not. Let's see here. So we have Slippery Boggles. We have a way to search. Yeah, this is fine enough. Like, odds, like, we need a, we need a white source, is basically what the sample is down to. And we'll get to dig four cards by turn three. Opponent mulligans to six. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Play it out. Pass the turn. It might help to use the hotkeys. No. It's that salty went to bed. Alright, looks like we are against either burn of some ilk. Or that is a uh, affinity deck. So we're just going to ethereal armor this turn. Next turn we can do the armadillo cloak. And the reason we're doing this instead of this to be mana efficient is because this lets us just go Armadillo Cloak into Armadillo Cloak. Nihil Spell Bomb makes me lean towards Affinity? Worth mentioning, Armadillo Cloak doesn't actually give lifelink. It just gives when this creature deals damage, you gain that much life. Which sounds the same, but isn't a keyword, so it can trigger multiple times if you have multiple Armadillo Cloaks. Very important distinction.
Ooh, okay. We will have to discard this Malevolent Rumble. This opponent have another Refurbished Familiar. It would not be very cash money of them. Okay, they're just going to deadly dispute not having the black mana to draw a card. But they did draw two off of the dispute itself. This is landing towards the vibe of being Affinity, though. We're just going to make this stupidly big. So it goes up 8, 11. Yeah, we just have an 11, 9 first strike trampler with hexproof. We're going to gain 22 health here. The yeah, opponent's just going to scoop it up. I don't really blame them. Um, it, did, by, it did, by the way, Robin. Uh, so going into game two, we don't really have artifact hate. Um, this is the only card that comes to mind because they fairly frequently will run the Brain Fart, the Kark Clan Shaman. And if they run that, it can very much ruin math. Ram through is probably not going to matter in this matchup. And I don't see Cartouche of Solidarity ma mattering because last I checked, Affinity doesn't run any Edict effects. Now, if they play one, I will eat my words, but I'm pretty sure they don't. Okay, so we have two ways we can play this. I think we don't have any pump spells. So I think we actually have to mulligan it. Okay, now what does this hand do? This hand does nothing without white mana, as of right now. We can go call Neat Garden and hope we hit something. And we will tuck one Armadillo Cloak. Yeah, we need to hit a, some form of white. Okay, that confirms that they are on Affinity. If they tap out, we will Rancor this up on our turn, assuming we don't hit a white source of some sort. Okay, Carp Clan Shaman. That is something we knew could come out. I'm really happy we brought these in. Utopia Sprawl at the top would probably be one of our best draws, otherwise just a normal planes would do the trick. Not ideal. So, we can... You know what, fuck it. Use the Rancor and try... Use the Rancor, see if we get rid of it permanently. Oh, I yeah, know, like, that is something that they should just acknowledge by now. And they don't. It's very odd. Yeah, we need to draw a white source like yesterday. Like, once we hit a white source, though, like, we get to go Falcon into Armadillo Cloak and Armadillo Cloak into Ethereal Armor and life is good. Opponent is in the tank. I'm sure what they're doing. They top one, bottom one. They will probably get. Yep, they get in for the one. We get to draw. We get to draw. Oh wait, Mr. Axon Skull to start in the lead. He understood. Opponent doesn't have a third land drop. I guess we'll get in for two more. Like, opponent it did mulligan, I believe. Yeah, they did mulligan to six. I am going to, against my better judgment, put out a slippery boggle here. Just to try and bait this out. Also, I'm kind of wishing we had kept up with this the first time. Okay, they did hit their third land. Thoughtcast to draw two. Opponent. It never occurs to me just how slow some pauper players play. Right, they're playing a Nihil Spell Bomb. It's, it doesn't really do anything for them now, but I guess it's a sacrifice target. And, like, we will just offer this trade up. This is more valuable to us than this right now, as odd as that is. Mm -hmm. 
white source off the top, please. No, sir, not a third green source. Does the opponent also just have, like, a dog shit hand? Like, they will dig better than me. Do not get me wrong. But it would be nice if they also just had no gas. Okay, so they're going to sacrifice it now, blow up the board. Rancor comes back. We have the ability to deploy this on our turn. Alright, they play the Refurbished Familiar. We will discard an Armadillo Cloak? So a nice thing about this that I found out the hard way is this doesn't actually kill them because it's non-flying creatures. Okay, opponent plays a new Cork Clan Shaman. Yeah. I love it. For the record, those who are wondering what Robin is talking about, not that you can really make out her full name, it is a a web novel, I believe, technically, called He Who Fights With Monsters. Highly recommend it. Very fun. I listened to the audiobook. We're going to play the Slippery Boggle out. Like, we need to force opponent to take game actions. Like, if we can force them to trade with the Rain Core, like, that's better than nothing. Like, yeah, they're not going to lose this. But, like, it takes them off either a mana or a redraw... And it kills this as well for this to come down. Okay, so they do do it now. And we can now play the Glade Cover Scout out. Oh, they actually physically published the books? I thought they kept it on like a uh, like ebook only thing. Opponent has three cards in hand. They go Wellspring. They will get the Cantrip. Going back up to three. Would not be surprised to see a Deadly Dispute here to just refill their hand back up to six cards. Refurbish Familiar. That's noticeably awful for us. Gonna have to lose the Ethereal Armor. Huh. That's kind of cool. Oh, this is getting really bad for us, though. You know, maybe we should have kept that because we've been given this first strike. I did not consider the first strike angle of that. Oh, come on. We're going to keep that just for discard fodder. Discard fodder. There we go. Yep, opponent will do the trade. Alright, Frogmite. Two mana? Deadly. Oh, nope. Reckoner's Bargain. They will draw three cards, gain two life. Two from that one, I have to clarify. Take two, going down to 17. Okay, this is, this is actively good. So now we can dig into our deck a little bit here. Okay, Abundant Growth is less than ideal. But it at least can trips. We're going to do it this way because we can then sacrifice this to play this. And we do get to draw a card off of this. That being said, opponent could have Metallic Rebuke, which would have been awful. So we make white, sacrifice the spawn. Falcon. And we have it on the field. Thank fucking god. Now, once we have this on it, it will be out of range of Refurbished Familiar. But a second one would be miserable. Then we would need First Strike. And like, this is also like one of the downs. Ugh, that's bad for us. They can use that to get back in the, one of the Refurbished Familiars. Yeah, that's not good for us at all. Hold that back and hope that we don't have a pump of some sort. Well, that is actively good. 
of Bronx buttons. So bam, bam, bam. Let's use this just to be safe. Um, we're going to play this. Hope we don't get Metallic Rebuke. We did not. We are specifically going to hold back one, two, three, four. Four mana, one mana. We're going to keep the Rancor in hand specifically so we can play the Ethereal Armored out next turn. Because if they play Refurbish Familiar this turn, we then have something to discard. Instead of, you know, having to discard the Ethereal Armor. Alright, they cycle, they discard draw, so they discarded a Blood Fountain to draw, to draw one. I don't know if I agree with that. Unless they're trying to hit a land drop. Okay, so they hit a Frog Knight. Candy Trail. Okay, so we're not going to get Refurbished Familiar this turn. That's good. So we'll get to go Bam Bam. Drawing another white card would not be ideal, but we also kind of want to keep cards in our hand for when they do get the Refurbished Familiars back. Okay, they did hit a fifth land draw finally. So it's like just turn nine. We eat four. Thankfully, we're going to be gaining more than that anyway. I'm not convinced our opponent has Metallic Rebuke at this stage. And we get to play around it for free. Like, we do get to keep up three mana here. Um. Yeah, we'll just attack. Like, I don't want to play the Rancor out and have it get countered. So keeping it in hand to have it, and the Glade Cover Scout so that we can discard it seems like a better play. I don't know if that's true. Our right, opponent is making two mana, sacrificing in Frogmite to go up to 11 life, because it does care about the CMC of the creature sacrificed. Or the CMV. Oh, they have cast them. Interesting. Did not expect that. That's bad. That's very bad. So this becomes a 3-3 a three, three flying indestructible now, I think. Yeah. Okay, so this just got really bad really quickly. So we can go Glade Cover Scout. Rancor. Because it's safe right now. Into Rancor. One, two, three, thirty-six, eleven. Okay, so opponent didn't take a line that is fairly obvious to me that I think they just missed. They could have cracked their Blood Fountain there, got back their Clark Clan arm, their Clark Clan Shaman, literally popped it for just one, and killed our only creature while we are tapped out with nothing in hand. And like these would have gotten in for like they could have even gotten in with these first. And this you could be attacking with for free, dude. It has flying and indestructible, like. Okay, there we go. That is what we needed to hit. So them not attacking might have just cost them the game, because had they hit, they would have been down to six, we would have died on the swing. But now we get to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like. Oh, uh, they probably have a fucking. Yeah, they've got to have a uh, Galvanic Blast here. Like, a single Galvanic Blast still kills us. They could have blocked that. That would have been three damage prevented for free. It is indestructible. Opponent is playing very sloppy. I don't think they're familiar with the deck, really. Right, the Deadly Dispute to dig two deeper. No, three deeper, because it's in her Wellspring. What the fuck is this? Collect Evidence 6. Each opponent sacrifices a creature and evidence was collected. Instead, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. Oh, okay. Alright, so... Opponent played very suboptimally, but still gets a dub. I'm not mad that we lost. I'm mad that we lost despite our opponent playing empirically bad as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, I'm going to cut lifelink here. 
I'm gonna bring in these back, bring these cartouches back in. I'm gonna cut one Solana ledge walker since this fills the same role. So what does this hand do? Turn one, we get a. A planes? Like, this hand isn't exciting, but, like, we get to dig, so I think we keep it. Oh, they mold to five. Down to four. Are they just aggressively digging for a Kark Clan Ironworks? Or Kark Clan Shaman, I should say? So we're going to actually just get a forest with this. Yeah, we're just going to go get a forest. And we're going to get that F6 node, because on our turn, we're going to go forest, Utopia Sprawl, making white, malevolent rumbles, probably. All right, Vault of Whisper into Blood Fountain. Oh, perfect. White. Rumblings? Creatures. That's a creature. Okie dokie. Alright, opponent has basically this turn to try and murder us with a... Well, not murder us, but present a Car Clan Shaman, which it looks like they are not. We will just discard the Sheltered Landscape, I believe. Yeah, because the rest of them increase our enchantment count, which is very important. <laughs> So like we even have edict protection with that out. So this has a va oh no, that has flying. Never mind. Ignore what I was about to say. Oh shit, I fucked up. We were supposed to Utopia Sprawl first. Well, c'est la vie. It still should be fine. It's just less than optimal. All right, so we have a 4-4 four, four, Hexproofer. We have something to sacrifice in case of a, an Edict. Unless they do that Extort thing or whatever the heck it was. Okay, they just got rid of their cast down. They play Necro Wellspring to draw a card. There is a tiny fly here that is getting on my last nerve. That is a Mere Enforcer. When it gets in for two in the air. Okay, so we're going to fix this now. So bam. Topia Sprawl, naming green. Uh, no, we'll still name white. Make green. Malevolent Rumbles. Uh, we'll take the Falcon, I believe. We'll take the Falcon. Nope, because this actually has flying. And that could matter later. Play the Falcon. Get him for five. They can trade here if they want. We do have first strike. Like, they got rid of that cast down, so, like, this becomes harder for them to remove, which is very nice. I think opponent might have just a 6 through their turn. Okay. We're not going to put that out because we want discard for reverse familiar purposes. We are going to get in for 5. Okay. Opponent needs another land to activate this. One, two, three, four. Great breath weapon. Literally took care of nothing. Let me phrase it. Took care of nothing that mattered. All right, they draw two. They can't draw a scry two. They top top. They must really like what they got. Uh, we're going to get in for six damage here, it looks like. That might just be lethal. Diversify our threats. This is specifically punished if they have cast down. Otherwise, we put them to five here. 
They're going to crack that to gain three life, draw a card. They're now down to eight health instead. We're very familiar. We kept this so they don't get the cantrip. Yeah, I kind of wish I kept the forest in hand just in case now. Reckoner's Bargain, they go up to 10. A Trample Enabler would be fantastic. Like Rancor or Armadillo Cloak wins us the game, I believe, on the spot. I'll take another Ethereal Armor. Uh, we are going to put it on... We're going to put on the Blade Cover Scout. They'll trade both of these now. Like, this makes them both legal threats. That's why we did it that way, for the record. Um, they'll have to trade, trade. Well, trade, trade. Chump, chump, chump is the one I'm looking for. An opponent has two cards in hand, but they can then sacrifice this to get new creatures back. If they remember this time. So they go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they could just get back double familiars. Now they could definitely get back double familiars. Okay, they are activating it. And they are getting back double familiars. So this will draw them two cards, give them two blocks. They're dead to literally any trample enabler. And the longer this goes on, the more terrified I am, for the record, because, like, this is just giving them time to draw into an out. Okay, they can still do that because they get the treasure token. I was thinking of why they did that. Okay, and we win. Make my monster grow. So this has first strike trample and hexproof and life link. We win the game. We win the match. On to match two. All right, on to match two. Opponent was last seen playing Rakdos Burn. Oh, this hand's fantastic. We don't have a way to make white mana, but like we actually have plays. We're gonna keep this. I do not believe Rockdose Burn main decks any edicts. I could double check that, but I'm not going to do that in the middle of the league. Well, I should rephrase that. Not in the middle of the league while I'm streaming. Rancor on the Blade Cover Scout. Get in for three, please. Thank you. Have a nice day. Dare I ask what you did, Robin? Okay, opponent is on the Sneaky Snacker build, so that's cool. We have a third land. That is actively good as well, because Ancestral Mask now. This can now swing in through the Valderan Epic here. Ah, that's fair. All right. Opponent can just go in for one. We're not going to block, just in case they do have an Edict. If we draw white, we play this Armadillo Cloak, and the game's over. These were really cool addition to Pauper, by the way. I like them. But I don't even know what they call them. But they like they come into play tapped, they make two colors, and they deal one point of damage to target opponent. Like I like it. It's a very neat design. Alright, opponent drains us for two and they get two blood tokens. Okay, deck. I have enough forests. I see you, but I need white. We're going to get into five, they'll go down to nine. All right, Faithless Loon, they will get back their Sneaky Snacker, comes to play tapped. And they will probably get two Madness Triggers here. Yep, Double Kitchen Imps, I believe those are two, two hasty boys with flying. Oh, that's an Alms of the Veils, so that's even worse. That That is a Lightning Helix to our face. We go down to eleven. Nine, ten. Eight. We're going down to eight here. Here yeah, we go down to eight. White off the top, please. Fuck. So we're eating four here. We'll block that. This is the downside to Boggle. Sometimes you just you just run cold. 
Great right, opponent draws two, discards two. What are they discarding? That's another kitchen imp. And a galvanic blast, and that's game in the air. All right. Nope. 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 All right, we were a bit away from hitting that white source. Damn, that sucks. Spirit Link in because we need Life Link. Free Wind Falcon because they will be bringing in red. Cut the ledge walkers because once again they fill the same niche. Um, we don't need rain through for this bit for this matchup. Run it like that. Well, yes, we would like to be on the play. No way to make white, so mulligan. No way to make white, mulligan. This we have to keep. Put back a Cantor and we got Rancor and that. This at least gives us the malevolent rumbling to uh, play towards. Like this can give us an enchantment that allows us to make white. We also just don't have a creature, so that's unfortunate. But once again, we have this. This this fills a lot of sins. Perfect. Now this needs to give us a creature. Perfect. We got a creature out of it. Malevolent Rumble gives... A lot of sins are forgiven via the power of the Rumble. Best top deck would probably be Ethereal Armor. Okay, that's cool. So they get their sneaky snacker back. So we're going to go Utopia Sprawl, bam. Run a name green because it makes this turn better, specifically. Glade Cover Scout. Into Rancor. Into Spirit Link. And this is where we pray that our opponent doesn't hit us for one on the board. On the floor, whatever. The ground. Need a way to give this first strike or increase its toughness, though. Because otherwise they could just walls with the X1s. Okay, they get a 2-2. Two, two. They have another Sneaky Snacker in the graveyard for next turn. Okay, they are going to just attack with that, with the intent of blocking this. That is perfect. That gives us the first strike we needed. Get him for 4, gain 4, go up to 22. That was great. What's opponent doing? Other faceless looting effect? Faithless looting style effect? Give demand answers. They'll discard their second sneaky snack because they'll get two this time. That's actually really cool. Bad for us, but very cool. Can a brother get his big enchantment, please? Because uh, this is eight damage a turn right now. It's not a big enchantment. We can get him for five. We're going to go back up to 19. Armadillo Cloak, Lifelink. Uh, okay, I'm happy I kept that now because now they don't get the cantrip. God, Croc Clan Shaman would be disgusting right now. They'd only need to pay to, like sacrifice two of their artifact lands and they'd board wipe us. While I'm hellbent, like that's just a fucking free win for them. Do they see that line though? This is also a lot more aggression in the air than I expected. Okay, demand answers. They're gonna drain us for two here. Or is it three? It's three, my bad. We go into 16, we take another eight, we go down to eight. Deck, Ancestral Mask off the top, please! I will take it, gladly. I would like to go up to 17 life, please. Can a brother get a night, man? <laughs> oh, thank God for Spirit Link. Really happy we brought that in. Opponent is now in the Abyss. 
yeah, they have six cards in hand, but we have a 9-7 first strike trampler with uh, lifelink effectively. It's not looking good for them. They would need to deal another five damage plus this. Another four damage. Oh my god, they got it. You crazy son of a bitch. Damn. I'm not even mad. Wait, did they say something? No, oh, too late to see now. All right, well, on to game, well, match three. All right, on to match three. Opponent will be on the play. And we are seeing one very common occurrence with this deck. It loses to itself, where, like, you don't draw the right half of enchantment versus creature, or you don't draw the white source. And it's just, it's a, it's a consistent thing, because you can't, you don't really have a card advantage engine. Like, a Snake Umbral-like effect would be fantastic in this deck. The one cost one, I think it's called Keen Senses, though, is an uncommon. But it just doesn't exist. In Pauper, that is. Uh, opponent is in the tank, apparently. Okay, cool. So, this is a good hand. Turn will... Oh, assuming that they are not on Ponza, this is a good hand. That's another reason this deck isn't top tier. You have 1.5 mini. So, if they're not on Ponza, we go turn one, Utopia Sprawl into turn two, Glade Cover Scout, and Abundant Growth. And why Abundant Growth first? Because we want to try and hit our land drop. Okay, red. Is this red synthesizer? This is red synthesizer, okay. They don't have the artifacts, so this doesn't have haste. They also kept seven, by the way, so like they were happy enough with their hand. Toby Sprawl, naming green, please. Okay, now they can attack for two. Four, they can attack for four. I kind of wish we'd said white now because we could have then gone Glade Cover into Cartouche. Okay, we still can. Good. So, Abundant Growth over here first. Opponent is making some form of considerations. What those are, I don't know. So what do you think about this hand, by the way? Because we have run through and an ability to give trample. We can play defensive with the Glade Cover Scout and eventually just have a big enough a hit with ram through in an attack that we kind of combo our opponent out in a single turn. It's a very fun thing to do. So we're going to Glade Cover Scout. And we are going to put out the Cartouche of Solidarity. If you think it's a 2-2 two -two with First Strike and a free 1-1. One -one. This 1-1 one -one we will probably freely trade while killing the other one. Okay. Do they attack? They do not. Good for us. Um, if they had tapped out, we would have made this huge, but they did not tap out. So, what an ancestral mask this boy. Make him, make him big. Make him chunky. So, I think the way this goes down... If we hit a land, I think life becomes better. An untapped land. Because if we hit an untapped land, we go Abundant Growth, Rancor. This is then a 14... 14, 12. We attack and ram through as well. And that should just be lethal. Who's going to make this huge? And we could just... We could literally just Rancor ram through next turn without even attacking. Actually, that's not entirely true, because they could... They could... Sacrifice the cre or destroy the creature, I guess, technically. So at that point, I guess it's better to go Rancor Abundant Growth. That gives us a total of plus... Yeah, that's definitely better, actually. 
that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's ten power. Oh, never mind. Opponent dies now. I think opponent will even see the writing on the wall before we even tap. Yeah, opponent just concedes to that. I don't blame them. Okay, then. So, Falcons in. Ledge Walkers out. Um, Spirit Link in, probably. Ram through. Probably don't need it, despite how that looked. There's an argument for the safekeepings. But what do we cut if we bring them in, is the question. It would probably be the Cartouches of Solidarity, actually. And I think that's an easy cut. So let's do that. So opponent gets to be on the play again. But yeah, that, that kind of highlights what I was talking about. Like, sometimes you lose to your hand. Other times the hand just gives it to you. This hand is a pretty solid keep. Like, this does nothing on its own. But we do get the ability to dig with Malevolent Rumble. And we just have a pro red creature that we'll be able to wall with for a while. While trying to bait out removal with this. Actually, it doesn't even sound right to call it removal. Get bait out gameplay actions. That's a fantastic turn three draw. So we'll play this turn one. Turn two will be the Falcon. Turn three will be Armadillo Cloak, probably on the Falcon. There's a world where our opponent just electricery us, electricaries us right now, but it doesn't look like it. Ah, okay. Opponent is just putting out the Gabos. So they're going to hit us for three this turn, then next turn, assuming they have a Bushwhacker or a little bit more. We can't block his Menace. Oh, that's fantastic. We'll play out the Falcon. What we do with our next turn will be largely determined by what our opponent does this turn, because I don't think they get to kill us, point blank. It might get close, but I don't think they get to kill us. Oh no. Bushwhack. Bushwhack. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Urgh. Good heavens. <sighs> Fuck. That was huge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we lose. So, uh, nah, they do need to have a burn spell. Yeah, they need to have a burn spell. Or a sacrifice. But yeah, they just came out of the gate super fucking hot. Yeah, like if they just have like land and synthesizer in hand, for example, and the synthesizer hits nothing, like we're fine enough, but like they just need some form of action. That's definitely enough. Okay. Yeah, like, next turn we would have gotten to go Rancor and Ancestral Mask, and that just would have been game, but, like, opponent came out of the gate super fast there. Alright, run it back. Like, sometimes the opponent has the nuts. This hand is perfectly fine. We don't have a way to grow, but, like, this is a turn to Falcon. And abundant growth might also just improve the hand as well. I guess what it boils down to is we need the opponent to not just have the absolute nut hand again. And even then, us being on the play as opposed to the draw might make a difference in that regard, because like that lets us get to three and make our turn three plays and all that. So abandoned ab abundant growth. 
see that's great so we'll be able to go turn two hulk turn three rancor lifelink i know i thought those lifelink rancor but you know what i meant The awkward thing about this hand is that like, we will have to take time off to do these rumbles at some point. No turn one play from our opponent, who kept a seven card fist. Weird. Okay, synthesizer. That will get them a land drop. That's probably why they didn't play anything last turn. They wanted to make sure that they could land drop off of it. Um, yeah, we'll just bam. And they just concede to the showing of lifelink. Can't say I agree with that, but you do you, opponent. On to match three? All right, on to match four. I know I said three. Four, though. This hand is very mid, but keepable. So turn one, we can play a bubble, or turn two, yeah, we'll just turn one, yeah, we'll just turn one and go from there, see if our opponent is going to be on something that is aggressive, or see if they're on control. So we go turn one boggle, and then we have, like, double rancors on a bunch of growth, depending on where we feel like we need to pivot. So, like, this guarantees our white, these give us some pumps. If we get another land, we can have aerial damage instead. Well, pseudo-aerial damage. Opponent kept six. Play out the Slippery Boy. They're, they were last seen playing Ponza. Okay, they're not on that today, though. Okay, that's a fantastic hit. Abundant Growth. Good, good. Rancor. Opponent Swamp Cycles. Are they on that Jund Revival deck? I have seen the Jund like, Zoom deck running around occasionally. My opponent's down to 17. Turn 2 with Zoom would be pretty, uh, pretty nuts. Kogari Rock Farm. Could be, could just be, uh, what is it, that? Golgari Gardens, I think it's called. So let's play around an Edict Effect and play out the boy. Play out a second Rancor. Get in for five. I'd like they had a third lane for this Armadillo Cloak. Okay. I didn't play around that. I will admit that. And the order, these come back to my hand. That's very much like we played around one, but couldn't play around the other kind of deal. Because, like, for all we knew, once again, they do just have an edict effect in hand. Yeah, like that. So, like, had we not played... Lead cover scout is by far not. Rancor is the best thing to have when your opponent is on removal, by the way. Especially when it's sorcery speed, because it's like, alright, keep removing it. And every other creature I play for the remainder of the game. Ooh, okay. So yeah, this is definitely Golgari Gardens then, based on what I'm seeing. Or like, if opponent doesn't remove this Glade Cover Scout, we will be swinging for 7, it looks like. Like, I'm not going to put uh, non-renewable resources on the field while I think that they can still answer me. Okay, Echo Wellspring. Tithing Blade 2. We have a deck specifically designed to play around removal, and this deck plays around our playing around removal. Lame. What is 
back up. Hold on. What do you got? Oh no. Oh no. That is like the worst thing you could have had for me. I'm going to call it there. Like, this is one of those things that, like, we would be in a very prolonged match going forward. <laughs> Alright, so... Raven Charm is actually very useful in this matchup. Because they care about the graveyard. Uh, Lifelink is less important. Ram Through is potentially important, but not necessary. Rancor is the GOAT. I will hear no disagreement on the matter. I think we have to drop the Armadillo Cloak. Cameo's safekeeping, unfortunately, doesn't interact with their removal in a meaningful way. Same thing with the Hawks. Standard Bears are much the same. I don't think they run any damage prevention, so that doesn't really do anything. So I think we run it as such. Yeah. With any luck, we get out of this nice and simple. Three hours of waiting for our opponent to sideboard later. All right. I should have paused there. Okay, so this hand is miserable when our opponent inevitably... Actually, this hand just does fucking stone cold nothing. This hand is good if our opponent doesn't just have an edict. So, you know, let's just get that out of the way and have it happen to us right away. Like, this is just a miserable matchup. Like, they run at least four edict effects and then at least two minus X minus X effects. Like, just by and large, this is not a matchup I expect to win 9 times out of 10. And now this would be a Tithing Blade. Oh, not a Tithing Blade, okay. We'll play out the Armadillo Cloak. We get in there, gain some life, and trample. If you wonder why we played that out despite trying to play around the edict effects, there's a chance that they have the minus two, minus two. Okay, there's the Titan Blade. Yeah, like we can't just play around it for the entire game. Like we have to devote resources. <sighs> now we need to draw another creature. Okay, one bass. They will get to scry one, draw a card. This is probably where we go down to two, two for the record. Like. I do not like our chances in this matchup. Opponent has to actually discard a card because they didn't hit their third land drop. Oh no. Um, This does nothing. Like, it can't even deal damage right now. Like, it, could, it can exile this bargain. That is the extent of what it can physically do. Icar Wellspring Dose. Let's back up to seven cards in hand. Sure would love to draw me a creature. That is not a creature. The longer this goes on, the more it kind of starts leaning towards my opponent being in control of the match. My opponent has yet another land drop. Alright, well, this will probably get us a creature. It does. It gets us a Sylvana Ledge Walker. Good hit, good hit. Any order, please. And it even gets us uh, Edict Bait. So 
So now it takes two edicts to clear the board for targeted removal or the minus minus X. But like a single edict effect isn't enough to clear our board now is the point. We will be able to go Rancor Ancestral Mask, get in for a good chunk of damage. Opponent is in the tank. They're paying some mana for a... Oh, there it is. Okay, there's the minus X minus X that we were worried about. And it looks like they topped a card. Don't have another play, though? No. Okay, Abundant Growth, please. Another creature off the top. That is another creature off the top. I will gladly take it. I will deploy the Rancor now for efficiency reasons. Rancor, uh, Titan Blade 2. Troublemaker Oof. There's Bargain Exile Target Artifact or Enchantment Opponent. Okay, so they're going to get to exile in our, in our enchantment we have. Neat. I like it. Goodbye, Rancor, probably. Yep. That is annoying, but fine. It wasn't Titan Blade, so I'm not going to complain. And look, we hit Rancor anyway. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, let's run out the Ancestral Mask. I don't think they have any instant speed removal for that. But like, far be it for me to tell them what their deck does or does not have. We fade them not having removal one turn here. We get to just slam a second Ancestral Mask and that's game. Ah! They run D-Glamour. Fuck. Alright. Glamour was uh, not on my bingo card today. Gonna keep it real. Should be, because I know that people run it for the artifact lands. That's the thorn. That is not a creature, unfortunately. <sighs> Fudge nuggets. One is just going to get to draw extra cards every turn now. I might give it two more card draws before we scoop it up, because, like, this is going to be a very slow deck. It has been accelerated significantly, but it will still be a slow deck. Actually, are we just Stone Cold Dead to Crypt Rats? Yeah, because they just keep up mana, they can kill whatever the fuck we put into play. I am fine scooping it. Eh, you know what, fuck it, I'll just cycle. For the lulls, to say I've done it. I have successfully cycled. And now I will concede. All right, um, Golgari Gardens, miserable matchup. Let's go to game match five. All right, match five. Uh, here's five packs. Figure something out is actually sealed, not uh, like uh, not uh, not draft. Draft is the here's your three packs. You'll pit, take one, pass it over, then do the same with whatever you just passed repeatedly. Isn't this... We, this is the guy we just played! How the... Oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? That's not okay. We're literally replaying the same guy. <sighs> Fuck me. <sighs> he finished his league, like... And it was like, you know what? Play him. Because our match was the final one for him. So now we're playing him again against the same fucking deck that is, like, the hardest counter to our deck. God fucking damn it. I'd have rather waited another ten minutes. 
And that's not hyperbole either. Like, I legitimately would have rather waited, rather waited 10 minutes. Fuck me. Maybe I should have cycled that, actually. We're gonna get in for three. It's absolutely not going to be enough, though. Like, just one edict effect ruins us. Like, we're not dead to the minus two, minus two thing, so that's good. But like I said, edict in, we're dead. Okay, not an edict. So you're saying there's a chance. If we draw Ancestral Mask, I think we actually win on the spot. Um... Push an extra four damage through. Yeah, had that been an Ancestral Mask instead of a Rancor, we would have won right then and there. Which would have been the nuttiest win I think I'd have ever gotten with this deck. Edict? Not Edict. Don't give me hope. Yeah, boy! Give us any good enchantment off the top! From the top ropes! No! A planes! Alright, so we're going to put our opponent down to two life. This will turn off their crit wraps effectively. Like to kill this, they need to kill that, or to kill themselves. Okay, Reckoner's Bargain, they go up to 4 health. Um, an untapped Black Source, they can then crit Brats for 3. They hit the Tithing Blade. Rancor goes back to our hand. Come on, Threat Density. Rumblings, and Malevolent Rumblings would be great right now. Oh wow, they... yeah, that's fair. Oh, fuck yeah. The, yeah, that's that's the shit. Creature. Creature. That's a creature. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. This is going to sound dumb. We're getting a creature token right now. This, the, yeah, okay. This is going to look stupid. We get the ethereal armor. Any order. We get a creature token. We make it big. Because they now need specifically another edict, which we know they had to dig for to get in the first place. But they could also just have removal. But specifically because of Crypt Rats, just getting the Ledge Walker wouldn't have done the trick. They could have just used it for one and killed it. This is a cast down probably though. Yeah, okay. We had to play around it. We, we were trying to play around what was on board for sure. They just didn't do what we needed. I don't know. Maybe we should have done that just to play, get the crit rats out of the way. Uh, wouldn't have mattered, probably. All right, clay cover scout. That's the turn. We're not even going to put the rancor out because right now they could pay one, kill it, and then we lose the rancor.
like forever. Another rumblings off the top would be fantastic. Though realistically, I think we are just buttoned. I'd have attacked there. Yeah, I think we're screwed though. Like, they still have seven cards in hand. Yep, they go. They hit us for one. We have no creatures. They pay two to reckon a spark and get Titan Blade away. Our opponent's gone six cards deeper than us now. Oh, that's bad. That's very, very bad. I don't think we come back from that. Fuck me, yeah, concede. Like, rumblings would have maybe done something, but like... Three land, like, hitting those lands is just fucking brutal. You know what? There might be a world where we just try to ram through to get an early kill. I know that sounds dumb, but I think that's what we're trying to do. These actually don't feel as good as I thought they would be. We've already determined like Link isn't good, so maybe, actually, I, know, I guess we'll keep it like that. We could keep the safekeepings. We could bring in the safekeepings because they prevent the rats from getting the kills. Um, what would we cut for those? I guess the what the armadillo cloaks we were originally going to cut. And like, I guess we're playing like a weird aggro combo deck where we're trying to ram through our opponent early on now. Uh, turn one, Utopia Sprawl. Turn two, Ledge Walker seems fine enough to me. Like we don't really get to be pickier. Especially since this is a double Rancor hand as well, so there's that. Love and Rumbling can become very good. Excellent, excellent. Okay, now we're wishing we had named green. Well, I guess not, because now we get to turn that on. We're playing into if our opponent has a, an Edict effect now. Okay, they will just exile the Ethereal Armor. That's, relatively speaking, okay. Um, play around the Edict, I guess. Take the Forest, play the Forest. Yeah, and then we get to play a Rancor still. This doesn't have... um. It does not have reach, so they very specifically need the minus x minus or the minus two minus two thing here to kill it. Without that, we get to ancestral mask and rancor and rancor minus two minus two and scry two. Come on, show it to me. Fucking do it, you coward. Does the opponent have the one of? No. Oh, wait, is it an instant? Oh! Oh, ho, ho? We get in for 11. Moments peace. What's going on here? Okay, deadly dispute. Okay. So they're digging two more. They get a treasure token. When it's at six health, I can see the finish line. They need double removal in some capacity. 
which isn't actually hard for that deck. Like, they run a lot of removal, and they have four mana. So, like, target removal on the spawn followed up a Titan Blade would get us. We then have Slippery Boggle, double Rancor. Actually, we only get to play one Rancor. Hmm. Deadly Dispute. That's a fantastic sign. Opponent is thinking about their actions. Like, this is very much, they need to answer this now or they are dead. If they answer the Ancestral Mask, they go down to one. Oh, fuck it, they didn't have it. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. Oh, if they answer the Ancestral Mask, we had a new one. Oops. All right, we just whack the receipt, uh, the, re the submit button. Re whack the submit button. We're actually tied, though. That's better than I was hoping for. Okay, opponent is on the play. What does this hand do? Turn one, we go Glade Cover Scout. No, turn one, we go Colony Garden into Glade Cover Scout. It is a keep. It's just a question of how we play it. And with that hit specifically, we are going to go bam, bam, bam. And we're actually going to make it green because we can then abundant growth next turn. So we're going to Abundant Growth to draw a card first. We're going to play out the Boggle. Play out the Colony Gardens. Pass the turn. Minus X, minus X. There it is. They bottomed their top card. Uh, Glade Cover Scout into Rancor. Do they have the Edict Effect? We're going to need to probably draw another creature or two to get through this game, but like, we have the potential ability to win here. Okay, so they're cycling. Like, our dream right now is to, like, get one untapped, they play any creature, and we hit a land. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. That is possibly the single best draw we could have gotten. So, hmm. I think we just take... It's a question of, do we go for super high upside? Or do we go for the long game? And I think we take the, the super high upside. Any order, please. We're going to play this forest out. And we're going to attempt to Ancestral Mask. This will be swinging in for 9 damage here. So they need to answer this this cycle in some capacity. That's probably... Okay, that's just Deadly Dispute. They draw three. They'll have upwards of six mana to answer two creatures, effectively. Because they need to kill this to kill this, probably. I am chomping at the bit, for the record. I would love if our opponent just played a Colony Garden and, like, killed the Eldrazi spawn. That would be the hilarious, the most hilarious timeline. Okay, Drown in Sorrow, number two, kills the Eldrazi spawn token. Do they then have the Edict? Like, they have exactly enough mana. That's a Colony Garden. No, 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 no. 
Okay, baby, go into the mask. Oh, it dies. Okay, I see, because we had gotten the minus minus. Okay, I see how that works. I was so confused for a second. I was just like, oh. Okay, um, fuck. Life has gotten hard. Okay, I made some map token. I don't care for that one. Yeah, there was a graveyard, not that we really use it at all. We're playing out lands because there's a world where we go like creature, buff, 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 ram through. And that's the world I'm playing towards right now, I think. Though, you know, if they get a crit right out, that could be hard to do, because then we would need a Tanios thing. The point is, we're not on no outs. That is not what we needed. Second ram through is definitely not where we're at right now. Yep, crack the Lembas with the Deadly Dispute to draw two cards. The opponent's just churning through their deck now. Oh, we were so close. That de-glamour play, though, was pretty fucking good. I'm not going to even be mad about that. Wait, that's just a troll. We could blank that for the foreseeable future. Or we could just kill it. Okay, so... One. A tofu. Ledgewalker. One, two, three. That doesn't kill it, does it? Hold on. One, two, one, two, three, four, five mana. Oh, this is going to be funny. Rancor this. <sighs> no, that, that's not what we're about, is it? Oh, it's so funny, though, if it works. <sighs> yeah, ram through. And ram through? <laughs> That's such a stupid play pattern. <laughs> but I love it. Oh, there's a colony garden that we would have loved to have the pad been played. Edict? Troublemaker Oof to exile it. That's also a thing. Yep. This is seeing a lot more play than I expected because it's exile. That's kind of neat. And the diving blade. Okay. Y'all just don't want me to have any resources. I see how it is. Well, I'm going to take a look at the top of my deck and cry as I hit nothing. Ugh. Give me the Armadillo Cloak. I will gladly take the creature. Any order, please. And against my better judgment, I am going to put said Armadillo Cloak on the Eldrazi Spawn Token. Okay, yeah, they had the removal. Hey, gotta, gotta fucking try, right? Oh my god, this is miserable. We're on turn 10. Ugh. For five mana, what are they doing? Oh, they make the Tithing Blade flip. Alright, that's a clock. Alright, no action. Pass the turn. It's 
So that's what, only one Titan Blade used so far? Wild. Fuck. The longer this goes, the worse it gets. The longer this goes, the worse it gets. We've actually churned through more of our deck than I realized, though. Like, we are down to 34 cards to their 31 only somehow. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, that just doesn't seem right. Oh, no. Oh, bother. F fuck. And I cannot emphasize that enough, because this, plus this, means our next two creatures are just dead. I think we are deterministically dead. We are, okay. And concede the game! Okay, so, um, fuck me in that last match. That's honestly all I can really say about that, like... Golgari... Gardens is probably the single worst matchup this deck has in existence. And we played it twice from the same person. Um, first match, we did lose to our own deck. Like, we might have had to have mulled a little bit more aggressively, but, like, you saw a common occurrence in that regard. Like, this deck is really good when it draws the right half of the deck. Sometimes, though, you'll just draw creatures, or you'll just draw the enchantments, and you'll have nothing to do. Like, that is the inherent risk of playing boggles it's even true in old modern boggles but you can see how it's also really fun um one thing i might change in the future is putting in the black accolade whose name i can't remember obsidian accolade i think it's called let me just double check because i think i have a copy yeah here it is obsidian accolade because um you can get around some of the stuff that that deck does i don't know if Kolkari gardens is enough portion of the metagame to make it worth it but it might be worth looking into um tamio safekeeping would have been nice only in that last match really because it's the only time we're really susceptible to damage is with crypt rats considering we also have these but like i don't know maybe we should have been bringing these in against red decks in general like i said i this is new tech so i'm not that sure just like i'm not really sure when we should be bringing in thraben charms but yeah, all around, the deck is very fun. You just need to be pretty aggressive with your mulligans. Uh, we never saw anything that would have made this happy to be in the deck, which I'm not going to complain about, honestly. Like, I would not have wanted to see a Corian Ranger deck in today's day, day and age, because that usually means walls, and I think walls beats this deck, unless we get a really good start. But yeah, all around, it is a fun deck. It's like fifth or sixth in the metagame right now, like in like top like five O's matches kind of thing. Highly recommend it. Hope you all had a wonderful time, and until next time, bye-bye!